Sekajino minasan konnichiwa. So this is one week after the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake that hit on April 14th at about 9.30 p.m. That earthquake registered at 6.5 as far as magnitude is concerned. But they're saying that that was only a pre-warning earthquake because on Saturday an even bigger earthquake that registered with a 7.3 magnitude hit Kumamoto Prefecture. The unique thing about this earthquake is that there are so many aftershocks. They said on the news yesterday that up until yesterday there were 692 aftershocks that could be felt. And this is one day later, so I'm figuring the number is already up at 700 or more. So please keep the people of Kumamoto Prefecture and Kyushu in your thoughts and prayers. This is reminding me of five years ago when the Great East Japan earthquake hit the Tohoku area, but also affected us here down in the Kanto area. As you know, there was a tsunami and also a nuclear meltdown that followed, which still continues on today. During that time, I remember that getting daily necessities was, was such a difficult thing. It was hard to get water, gasoline, toilet paper, food was just, it was very difficult. And the people in Kumamoto and Kyushu are going through the same thing. I have relatives in Miyazaki who have informed us that they are safe, which is a good thing, but it is hard to get the daily necessities is what they're saying. One bit of good news is though, the other day on the highway, I saw Japan's self-defense force in great numbers with many, many trucks heading down the highway on their way to Kumamoto to bring supplies and daily necessities to them. So that's good news. That's probably not enough, but there is help on the way so that that's that's a good thing but the reason for making this video was it made me thought that if any foreigners or people came to japan and an earthquake happened i think just the language barrier in itself would just be a big frustration and a big scare so i'm going to give you some terms related to earthquakes just so that you can keep them in the back of your mind should you be in the country and an earthquake happen so let's start with those terms First, let's start with earthquake. Earthquake in Japanese is jishin. Jishin. Then we move on to aftershocks. Aftershocks are yoshin. Yoshin. And something the news always checks or updates people on immediately after an earthquake are tsunamis or tidal waves. And as you know, that in Japanese is tsunami. Another thing that follows earthquakes that people are very concerned about after an earthquake are fires. And when you watch the news, they may use different terms for the word fire. There are different ways to say it. Examples are kasai, kaji, hi. So these are different ways to say fire. And something else that follows earthquakes are power outages. So power outage in Japanese is teiden. Teiden. And if need be that you need to evacuate, like in the situation of Kumamoto, because of the great number of aftershocks, people are evacuating in great numbers. Over 100,000 people are at different shelters. So evacuation in Japanese is Hinan. Hinan. And evacuation shelter is Hinanjo. Hinanjo. So I hope this is helpful and I hope that things get better in Kumamoto. So until next time, matane.